Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our first in-person meeting um, for Tuesday. Do you have something, DJ? Nope. Okay. <laughs> for Tuesday, uh, May 25th, um, I'd like to call the meeting to order and start with roll call, please, starting with uh, our chief of police. Chief Brandon Pasquale. Uh, Deputy Chief Phil Pulaski. Kelly Goff, Township Engineer. Jim Sullivan, Director of Engineering Services. Dave Chris, Director of Finance. <laughs> Jeff Winterbottom, Assistant Manager. Bob Hart, Township Manager. Sean Kilkenny, Township Solicitor. Supervisor Dennis DeSanto. Jim, uh, Jim Winder, Supervisor. Kevin McDevitt, Supervisor. Joe Gavanis, Vice Chair. And Ashley DePiro, Chairwoman. Um, I would like everybody to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you, everybody. And just to make a little disclosure here, we're all fully vaccinated. So I just wanted to point that out, too. Um, so uh, uh, next one is announcement of executive session. Um, we discuss matters of personnel and litigation. I'd also like to the approval of the meeting minutes for April 27th. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll put that in the form of a motion. Thank you, Supervisor DeSanto. Do I have a second? I can second that. Thank you, Supervisor Jamila. Supervisor Winder, excuse me. Um, all those that approve? Aye. Okay. I'm abstaining because I was at the last meeting. Okay. Okay, so the next um, order of business is Mental Health Awareness Month. We have a special presenter, Paul Butler, who is the director of MCES. Um, Paul, if you don't mind taking a stand right here and introduce your, if you want to bring your friend up too. I'm also vaccinated just for that. Excellent. <laughs> uh, I am the assistant director for Clarity. The director is Julie, she's with me. Uh, I'm the assistant director of crisis services at uh, Montgomery County Emergency Service. And I did bring a little PowerPoint. I sent it off to you, but I don't know if I have. The we have it. Yes, thank yeah, you. Marvelous. Um, and be happy to present it in any form or fashion, if you like. Please. Okay. Give me one second. I have to get my notes. <laughs> okay. Um, also, congratulations. I hear you got married. And I welcome did. back thank to you. the meeting. Yes. First meeting. <laughs> First meeting. <laughs> I'd like to uh, apologize, um, Mr. Butler. Yes. We would have this on the screen today as typical, but since it's our first time back and we are um, Zooming the meeting right. live and doing uh, this, there was a little bit of technical, so I apologize, but they all have printed um, okay. material. Well, I work diligently, so <laughs> you'll, have <to> believe, <laughs> you'll have to believe me. In your mind's eye. <laughs> uh, so number one, I wanted to thank everybody for having us here. Uh, mental health awareness is important and, you know, Every month is Mental Health Awareness Month as far as we're concerned at Montgomery County Emergency Services. I know it's an important thing in our community here. Um, we work very closely with East Norton Township as well as the surrounding townships. I know I've had conversations with Chief Pasquale um, several times with cases in the community and um, you know, so we're happy to be here. So uh, I just wanted to get into a little bit of detail about mental health and how it works in our community. Um, in general, 20.6% of U.S. adults experience mental illness, and that was a 20, 2019 statistic. So that's about 51.5 million people. So that represents one in five adults. It's a big number. Um, you know, so some guaranteed somebody in your family, somebody you know, a neighbor, uh, somebody who is walking down the block, maybe one of those one in five, maybe us. Uh, certainly, certainly, mental health has uh, no boundaries and goes across many groups of people. Um, so I won't 
I, I put it all in detail, so I won't, I won't go into a whole bunch of statistics with you to, to overwhelm you. But um, just a couple interesting pieces of information. People with depression have 40% higher risk of developing cardiovascular and metabolic disease than the general population. So uh, having a mental health condition can affect you and uh, your physical health as well. So uh, when we are looking at our clientele and, and our people who come into our services, we want to make sure that not only is our mental health being taken care of, but also physical health. This is a group of people who have serious mental illness, or it's called SMI. You may see that in some statistics. Um, our, our mental health disease is considered uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, major depressive disorder. Um, individuals with those kinds of diagnosis can live up to 20 years less than the general population because most of the time, a lot of the times, their, their health care needs are underlooked. So that's, I mean, I think a dramatic statistic. 18.4% um, of adults with mental health issues um, also had a co occurring substance abuse disorder. Um, you might ask yourself, why are, these, why are these numbers important to us? This is people who are in our community and who our resources are going to every day. Uh, resources for police departments, resources for community needs, social workers, other community services. Uh, for our children, uh, high school students with significant symptoms of depression are more than twice as likely to drop out compared to their peers. That's a, that's a big issue, and I'll show you that later when we talk about people engaging. Uh, in the family, at least 8.4 million people in the U.S. care for an adult in their, house, in their household who have a mental health issue. Um, so that's full-time care um, dedicated exclusively to the needs of somebody who's in your household. Sometimes it's a parent, sometimes it's a child, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin. Um, a, a lot of dedicated dedication of resources in a, in a home setting. Uh, so that's an average of 32 hours per week providing unpaid care for somebody who they love. So um, that's a full-time job. That's full-time hours, you know. Um, in the community, mental illness and substance use disorders are involved uh, in one out of eight emergency department visits. So we have two uh, emergency rooms here in East Norton. Can I ask for a water? You guys have a water? Yeah. <laughs> Do you I didn't even open it yet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Jamila drank out of that one, but she's been vaccinated. <laughs> she's vaccinated. Don't worry about she's it. Back. I was waiting for someone to say it. It's a CDC recommendation. It's all right. <laughs> so uh, mood disorders are the most common cause of hospitalization for all people in the U.S. Um, uh, 70.4% of youth in the juvenile justice system have a diagnosed mental illness that's consistent with, uh, it's slightly less for adults in the uh, adult justice, um, justice system, but still pretty prevalent. Um, so I wanted to look at some suicide risk factors. You may say, uh, you know, you may have a loved one who you come across someday and they are uncharacteristic of themselves. They may be depressed, they may be not leaving their bedroom. Um, you're concerned, you're a worried family member, and, and you want to know what are some of the risk factors that maybe I want to look out for this person who might be at risk of harming themselves. So some of this, this was a good infographic I pulled uh, from um, health, healthy families. Um, so predictors, previous suicide attempts, something to look at. Relationship problems, is there conflict between a spouse? Um, you know, is there job loss? Is there... Um, yeah, substance abuse. Substance abuse is a big predictor, alcohol in particular. It's almost considered a, a predictive factor. Mm -hmm. um, bullying, recent death of a member of the family. Their, somebody's primary support was their parent, and their parent has unexpectedly passed away. That is going to be a big, uh, big change in, in life experience. Some, of, some warning signs that we look out for. So me and Julie here work in the crisis department. I'll let her talk a little bit about what we do in the crisis mm -hmm. department in a few minutes. Uh, but we are looking at risk factors for individuals who present to us. So when we see suicide warning uh, signs, we're looking at things that are going on in the person's life. Um, down the road, there's a little bit of statistics, but uh, it, it, you'll see in the Montgomery County statistics, the groups that are most likely to have a completed suicide are middle-aged uh, white males uh, who are 74% of Montgomery County's suicide rate. In, 19, in 2019, there were 114 suicides, I believe. Of that, the largest group 
was uh, white males. Um, also the group who's less likely to get, step out and try to get any uh, help. Unfortunately, there's stigma attached to that. You see some more of that down the road. Um, so we, we're looking for increase in, uh, in, in behaviors like substance abuse, um, leaving letters, planning for leaving things behind after they pass away. Uh, you know, ha have they been posting on Facebook or social media, leaving phone messages, text messages, saying goodbye to loved ones, other things like that. So we're, we're looking out for those. And when we're communicating with family members who are worried about their loved ones, we're asking them, what, what are you seeing at home? What are some of the things? Is this a changed behavior? Is this different than their baseline function? Uh, and how do we look out for, for these? So along with risk factors, there's also protective features. So what can, what can you do to be supportive there? Uh, connections, family connections, connections to people in the community, responsibility, people feeling responsibility to their family, to their places of employment, volunteer opportunities, uh, to the people in their community. Those are some of the protective features. Engaging with friends, going out, being able to get out of bed in the morning and get dressed and have something to wake up for. Those are big protective features. Um, so in, uh, my, my statistics were slightly older than the 2019 ones I pulled later, but in 2017, there were 1.4 million suicide attempts in the United States of America. So that's a staggering number, huge amount of number. Um, and in, that, in those statistics, white males accounted for 78% of the completed suicide. Um, the highest rate was for those from 45 to 54 in that age group, followed only by those who were uh, 80 and above. Um, so stigma is a big issue. Why, why do people not go to get help? You know, uh, there's help out there. We have other medical issues that people access treatment for. People have diabetes, asthma, everything like along those lines. People, when they traditionally have problems, go to the doctor and go get help. People don't get help for mental health issues. They are, there's sometimes big judgments in family or they feel that there is a judgment in their family. Um, that sometimes gets in the way of people accessing treatment. Uh, so there's some common held misbeliefs amongst uh, communities, family members, people, even people who have mental health issues, uh, that they won't be get better. There's no medicine that's gonna make anything better. People will be better off without me, but also uh, that people with mental illness are attention seeking. People with mental illness are violent or aggressive. Uh, people with mental illness are bad people or deserve what happens to them. So these are some of the some of the negative uh, stigmas that are attached to mental health issues and why it becomes a challenge to overcome to, to get to treatment. So one of the biggest things to overcome these stigmas and getting people to get out the door and access treatment is talk about it. Talk about, talk about it with your loved ones, talk about it with your family members, uh, reaching, reaching out, saying, are you okay? Um, asking the important questions. A lot of people think that asking the questions means that you've opened that door, now something's gonna happen. Uh, anything you say isn't, isn't gonna cause, isn't going to result in a, in, a, in a negative outcome for somebody harming themselves, as long as you're engaging. Um, so some of the questions that we ask, do you have a, a plan to harm yourself? Are you having uh, thoughts to hurt yourself? Are you having plans, plans to hurt somebody else? Uh, how can we help? Be supportive, leave the door open. These are big things in, in, our, in our world is communication, connectivity. Uh, so with, with the uh, advent of COVID-19, as you guys can tell, your first meeting back in over a year and a half, I would imagine, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of changes. Um, a lot of people have not had a good time of it. Um, not only uh, with, with the being locked in at home for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, turning your home into a home office, uh, you know, having your kids at home, schooling at home all day long, uh, not really being able to go out to dinner, engaging with people in the community, that has had a big effect on people. So during this uh, that's recent, this is gonna be studied, I'm sure, for years, unprecedented is one of my most hated words, but I, <laughs> I'll use it here today anyway. Um, but, but typically, one in 10 adults has issues with depression or anxiety or report those symptoms in the, in the course of the last year. That, over the period of this, of this pandemic, that is up to increase to about four in 10 adults in the United States. So that's 
40% of the overall population when formerly it was about 10% of the population. So that's, that's a big change. Um, difficulty, uh, some, of the, some of the difficulties that people are experiencing are difficulty in sleeping, eating, uh, addition, additional substance abuse, um, worsening chronic conditions, chronic pain, chronic medical issues, breathing issues. Uh, people have reported increase in those types of symptoms. Um, I have some good graphs in there. I think they have really good information, so if you ever get a chance to look through them. Um, so access to treatment. So now that we know that there's uh, issues in our community, that people who we love, people who we care about, people who are neighbors who have issues, how do you get to that person to access treatment? So uh, in oh, the US overall, 44.8% of those who have mental health issues end up access, uh, accessing treatment in, in the year. 65.5% um, of U.S. adults with serious mental illness do, which is, which is a fairly <coughs> good number considering overall. Um, treatment varies by demographics. Males are 36.8% if they have a mental health problem to also access treatment. We're not so good at opening up who would have guessed. <laughs> um, but something that's important given the statistic about suicide. So uh, how, how do you get your loved one to, to say, yep, I, I think it's time for, for treatment? Or what do you do when somebody you love, somebody you care about, uh, is having a mental health emergency and you need to get care for them that maybe they are or are not agreeable to? Um, so in situations that are less emergent, somebody is depressed, somebody is anxious, somebody has been having a rough time. Uh, it, it might be worth it contacting a primary care physician, uh, your insurance provider to ask about mental health providers who are in your area code. A lot of them are very good. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, you have, they have websites that you can look into specialties so you can easily find a provider near you. The National Alliance for the Mentally Ill, NAMI, uh, we have a local branch here up in Lansdale. They have an office. They do a lot of group, um, group sessions for family members who are struggling with that very issue. How do I get my loved one to treatment? How do I get my loved one to understand that, that they're hurting and then they need to, to, to get to that next level? Now, we come in here at, at our crisis department, Montgomery County Emergency Service, we get, get involved uh, in more emergent typically. I mean, we're, we're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for informational purposes. Anybody can call at any time. Um, but if we're getting to a position where my loved one is threatening to harm themselves. My loved one is, has, is thinking about taking an overdose. My loved one has bought a firearm and is starting to leave notes for people. Those are conversations that we have. And, and it, that's the next step that we usually get involved. If you're ever in a situation where uh, a loved one is in an emergency situation and you need to have an immediate intervention, call 911. We can work from there. Um, but but the, first, the first priority is for safety in, in your house, in your neighborhood, your kid's safety, your family member safety. Other than that, we have crisis centers, we have emergency rooms, we have mobile crisis. There's always ability to access services in Montgomery County. We're lucky in Montgomery County to have services, as robust as, as we do, that a lot of the counties would really be you know, excited. I come from Delaware County, I'm a native of Delaware County, I can tell you that they do not have the services that we have up here in Montgomery County. So it's, it's a nice change of pace. Um, so I, we're going to talk a little bit about Montgomery County Emergency Service, the place that we, our facility, me and Julie, work at. Um, so I'll, I'll bring her up to talk a little bit about our crisis center. But overall, we were founded in 1974. We're about to be 50 years old. Uh, really came about as a case of deinstitutionalization uh, when the state hospital started shutting down and there was no emergency care for people who have mental health emergencies. That's, that's the void that we filled in. We were partnership with the county. We uh, provide emergency psychiatric care and evaluation and inpatient services. We uh, are home to the Montgomery County Delegates Office. That's a person from the county office who makes a decision about uh, whether or not to approve an involuntary commitment. Um, we have a 60-bed adult unit and a subacute eight-bed unit, which is, I can give a little bit more detail, but Julie can tell you a little bit more about our crisis unit. She's been director for 25? 25. 25. Going, on, going on 28 years, actually. 28 years. Started very young. 
I'll be part of that later. <laughs> uh, I think Paul covered a lot. Uh, again, thanks for having us here. Um, but I did want to just clarify some um, information about our agency. We are right here in the backyard here uh, on the state hospital campus, <coughs> but we are a private facility incorporated as Montgomery County Emergency Service. Um, we, um, private nonprofit agency, uh, while we're not even a part of the county per se, although we op obviously do have a very close working relationship with the county and the county supports us um, uh, financially and, and otherwise with, with our services. Um, we also uh, are connected with the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So anybody who, uh, your, your calls there are rooted actually by um, uh, your, your area code. So if you have a 610 area code from, from our, our locality here and you're now living in California, you'll likely get our, our lifeline here, okay? <clears throat> So uh, that's big, and coming, which is pertinent to, to your work here, uh, will be uh, 988 implementation. I don't know if you've heard of that, but there'll be a national number uh, for um, people to call, just like you would call 911, but you can seek mental health support through this 988 number. So I'm actually on a committee working on that now with, um, with the National Lifeline. So uh, it's gonna be lots of, lots of work. <laughs> Uh, lots of funding will probably be needed for that. <laughs> um, so like Paul said, we're, we're open 24 hours a day. Paul mentioned the mobile crisis. I'm sure they've been working um, with, uh, with you at, at some point. The, the mobile crisis is a separate company through Access Services, but we do work very closely with them. So if you're you know, not comfortable calling us, you can call them. We'll work together to try to support the individual as best we can. Um, I think that's all I wanted to cover. Yeah. Any questions? Right. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, yeah. Anything else you guys? No, I, did, I did want to talk yeah. two more things. Yeah, 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 yeah. go, go, go. I'll leave you alone for the rest of the day. Of course. I get over to be excited about uh, that's okay. our mental health services here. I get it, believe me. Um, we, uh, two things that's, uh, that we have that nowhere else in the state or some places, sometimes the country uh, have is our mental health ambulance, which yes. is specialty to our, our our facility. We're the first, I don't know if we're the only anymore, but we <coughs> were at one time the only mental health ambulance that went out to serve with uh, police departments, uh, particularly involuntary commitments, but also voluntary and other transports uh, for um, hospital, for hospital to hospital transports. Uh, and uh, one other very important distinction is our police school. We have something that's called uh, CIS. Um, our, our police school has been in operation now for 30 years. 30 years is the first one in the country. It's nationally recognized and touted. We, um, our, our uh, staff person, Michelle Monza, is the director of that program. She uh, has trained officers from all over Montgomery County, but also all over the country. We have, it's a three-day class that uh, officers from multiple police departments attend so that uh, they can work on de-escalating psychiatric crisis in the community. So. Um, we also want to make sure that we're the front door uh, for diversions for people who maybe would be better served in mental health services as opposed to going to jail or being arrested. So uh, we, we look into um, making sure that we're, we're an option and that we can have a quick turnaround in an appropriate, an appropriate setting for, for clients who need it. So I think that's, I think that's yep, it. Sorry. Amazing work. Thank you so Good much. Lunch, no wonder we're always um, Just a couple of things I just want to say. Number one is thank you so much for your service. I know it's not easy working in mental health and drug and alcohol, so thank you. Um, and one thing that you said I just want to highlight is just talking about it just helps with the destigmatization of mental health and drug and alcohol. Um, so I think the more we talk about it, um, the more we can make this change, just making it normal. It's just, it's okay. So thank you. Um, would you be willing to entertain any questions or comments from the staff or board? Anybody? Well, I'll, I'll start with a question. Um, during the pandemic, which hopefully is behind us for the most part now, uh, you know, I got out and walked around the neighborhoods and a lot of people, and we know this, um, the, the question of the schools being open or closed and hybrid and, and those students who maybe couldn't keep up with being uh, learning remotely, 
Is there, especially with the teens and the high school students, do you see a, an increase in suicides? I know I, a couple parents have mentioned that their kids look depressed, but they don't know because they're not going to talk. You know, what, what have you discovered over the last year? I mean, anecdotally, we could tell you, yes, that that's a very real uh, problem right now. Um, I think just like in the medical realm, people weren't seeking treatment because they were afraid to go to doctor's appointments or you know, uh, medical offices, it was the same thing with mental health. Um, we don't deal with kids directly at our agency per se, but we do um, refer them to the mobile crisis and we may have to help process 302s. And um, there's chronically been backlogs of in hospitals for kids waiting for inpatient psychiatric beds. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very uh, real problem, yes. Okay, well hopefully that will decrease, we hope, with life getting back to normal. Thank you. Quick question. Are you doing any work with um, the county parole board or Montgomery County prison system? Because, you know, I, I love that you're doing work with the police on the front lines, but oftentimes, you know, people are violating probation, right? Um, they're getting sent back to prison and can you talk about any of that? That's an excellent question. We uh, do weekly evaluations with the prison. They have a uh, okay. medical unit that's at their facility. Um, so we typically, they prioritize who's going to be evaluated at any given point. But we do at least one uh, a week uh, to uh, assess for need of immediate emerging psych inpatient psychiatric care. Uh, but they, there are also a, a litany of other services. There's case management that's run by other organizations that have uh, prison in reach. Uh, there is a mobile crisis that also works with that. So we do our part for the acute psychiatric needs of those who are maybe in the prison. Um, there, the state does still operate a forensic unit where that's sometimes for treatment. In Montgomery County, we have the luck of again having our facility, which other counties don't have. Uh, a lot of other county facilities would have to to get anybody in treatment has to do with the state referral mm. to the state hospital that handles the whole eastern three quarters of Pennsylvania. So there's very limited bed space a long ways. So we like to we, we really do get through that that list of people to try to get them to treatment as opposed to yeah. continued uh, punishment. Got so it's not a not a very good motivator to you know get, yeah. get better. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a question. Uh, so when you have someone who's who needs to be uh, treated, needs to be hospitalized, say, and you go to take them in the hospital and there's no room for them. What do you do with them? Well, for adults, we're, again, pretty lucky in Montgomery County. We do have a pretty, um, uh, pretty good resources. Uh, we, we have, like Paul mentioned, the, the inpatient unit at our facility. There are also four or five other mental health facilities in Montgomery County. Um, Montgomery County also has contracts outside of the county. Um, in Philadelphia, there are a few hospitals that we can send folks to. So fortunately, um, I think for adults, um, you know, most of the time we're able to get keep folks somewhere. There is a small population that, that is harder. You'll, you'll hear probably about the ERs. It's a reality across the nation about people being um, what they call boarding in, in, in ERs because there's no placement. And that's probably, um, you know, bigger system issues uh, in terms of lack of proper support and, and, and funding for, for people who need longer term care. Is there anything that we as electeds can do to help you? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, no, no, I'm, I, listen, I'm not offering you money, but I'll write a, but I'll write a good letter, boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be interesting to see the statistics that come out of this year. We, we put some anecdotal, you know, first run statistics that come out. There has been some challenges uh, with an increase in some acuity issues and some of the co-occurring. We've seen a re re resurgence of methamphetamines, which is something we really had not seen since the conversation that we were having about opioids maybe four or five years ago. We're now having about methamphetamines, mm -hmm. but it's kind wow. of a different type of thing. So. Uh, you know, so there are some challenges in, in placements. Um, in, in particular, our higher acuity cases, which I think Julie was talking about, uh, suburban and Einstein locally sometimes do have difficulty moving some of the higher acuity cases on. Because right now, it's just really an availability issue for that level of care because it requires a higher staffing ratio, requires mm -hmm. additional resources, which are 
sometimes difficult to, to have available. It definitely could continue to advocacy, yeah. you know, like you're having us here, the getting the word out, like again, talking about it, that, that goes a long way with, um, you know, public information and change. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one thing, uh, I was wondering, Bob, can we put this presentation on the uh, website? Sure. Like a YouTube to, to show what this was, and also this and as a uh, PowerPoint presentation, and maybe Good drive gosh. it through our uh, yeah, sure. social media. Sounds great. You know, for the month and say, you know, this is the month. Will do. And last year you were at Community Day, so we're hoping that you'll be there again. Yeah, we're going to be there again. Okay. Last year, the pre-19, uh, COVID-19, we were at the Community yeah. Day, so we yeah. happy to go again. Awesome. Um, we're, we're always, uh, our crisis center is always open, and we're always happy to take phone calls from people in the community who have questions about my access treatment. We might not always be the answer to the question, but we'll at least try to get people pointed in the right direction on how to navigate the system, which is sometimes unwieldy and complicated to navigate. Yeah. Great. Any other questions from the staff? Okay. Do we want to do like a socially distant photo? For MCES in the township, yeah. maybe they can come up here and we can we'll just stand. Just, we'll stand. We'll stand, and they'll stand here, and we get a picture for sure. the no newsletter, their program. Right. Thank you. Oh yeah, I should probably step out of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. no, 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 no come on up front. Yeah. Good. Awesome. <laughs> That's good. My wife told me I've been drinking. drinking. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And you certainly don't have to stay for the whole meeting. You're welcome to. I mean, you're welcome to. All right. Um, moving on, citizens to be heard. Okay. None being. Any comments by the Board of Supervisors? It's nice to be here. Yeah, it is nice, nice to be, to be here. It is nice always. to be back. And uh, I think the people of the town have, have really shown resist res resistance. They show resistance. Resilience. Yeah, they show resilience. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's, it, it hasn't been easy for anybody. Um, but we, we stayed out. I mean, you all, I don't want to speak for anybody else. We stayed out to be safe. Um, and I think, that, I think that our timing is good. So I'm just glad to be in the same room with all of you. Same. It's been great. And it's interesting. It's I've been a chairwoman for five months, but this is the first time I'm here. And Jamila, I know this is her first meeting in person too. So it's just this is all new to navigate. It's nice to be back. It's nice to be back. Um, there is no old business. There is um, going on to new business. We have resolution number 2835, authorization of the submission for a grant under the Greenway Trails and Recreation Programs. I would like to call on the township engineer, Ms. Kelly Goff, to review this item, please. Can you pass the mic down? Thank you, Chairwoman DiPiero. Um, this resolution will authorize the submission of the grant application um, for the Stanbridge, Stanbridge Street Park facility improvements. This is the DCD Greenways Trails and Recreation Program. Under this application, the township will be requesting funds in the amount of $250,000. There is a minimum match of 15%. Um, this, these funds can be used to um, improve the various facilities within the Stanbridge Street Park. Um, we are developing a concept plan within the township. Various improvements will include a solar carport, ADA compliant trails, um, an ADA compliant bathroom, landscaping, and various other recreational facilities. Um, and that is all I have under this. If you have any questions, please ask. Any questions from the board? So in a nutshell, it's to make... <clears throat> Sorry, so in a nutshell, it's to make... It's all for ADA improvements, correct? There's a, yes, ADA improvements. There's to Stanford Street Park? Yes. Okay. okay. Any other further questions or discussions, comments? Okay. Uh, none being, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 2835. Does anybody want to second that motion? Second. I'll second. Okay, seconded by Supervisor DeSanto. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. 
Okay, next item, resolution number 2836, authorizing the application for the Watershed Restoration and Protection Program, the WRPP grant for the Heroes Park Basin Project. And again, I'd like to call and welcome back Kelly Groff to uh, review that item. Thank you, Supervisor Gavanis. It is good to be back. <laughs> Um, so under this grant application, this is the Watershed Restoration and Protection Program grant application. This, the, the funds for this will be used to install um, a basin and various stormwater management facilities um, within Heroes Park. The result of the stormwater management facilities will improve water quality as well as uh, decreased flooding within nearby intersections of the park. Um, the, the improvements will also um, meet requirements that are needed under your MS4 permit. There is a 15% match and the total project cost is $300,000. If you have any questions, please ask. Any questions from board? I just have one question and I know the answer, but just to clarify. This is not bringing back the pond that was at the park <laughs> years ago. This is no, it's not. retention. Yeah, it's not a <laughs> pond. No it's, it's, <laughs> well, I just want to say a, a lot of people learned how to fish at that park. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's, for, it's, it's not a pond. It's for stormwater management, um, improvements in water quality, and flood mitigation. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Ms. Goff, just for, for, for <laughs> everyone's benefit on the Zoom, when you when you talk about the grants and you say it's a 15%, um, can you just real quick put that in, in layman's terms as what, what that means when? Sure. So if you're requesting, if the total project cost is $100,000, um, the grant will, and there's a 15% match, the uh, funding agency will pay for $85,000 of that and the township would pay for $15,000. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions from the board? Okay, I'd like to make a motion to um, resolve, I'm sorry, make a motion to approve resolution number 2836. Would anybody like to second that motion? I'll second. Okay, seconded by Chair, our Vice Chair, uh, Mr. Gavanis. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay, motion carries. Is it my turn? Yes. Yep. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Resolution number 2831, reaffirming East Norton Township's emergency operations plan. I'd like to call on Chief Pasquale uh, to review this item. I had the opportunity to review the plan. Um, we updated it uh, and, and made sure it was current. So with that, we recommend it be adopted. Is there, any, there wasn't really uh, much to it. We had to make some minor adjustments to include and, and update uh, current personnel and staffing. Okay. Any questions from the board? Any? Is the plan like scream and run or? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was a joke. It was a bad joke. Never mind. Don't answer that. No. So this, the small improvements were just to add staff, is that what you're saying? It was correcting um, staff, uh, updating staff uh, yourselves. Uh, like I said, there, there was some staffing uh, that needed to be updated. Um, it was seemingly carried over for years. Um, so we went through it thoroughly and made sure that, like I said, resources and staffing and all that were, were up to date. Okay. So all right. Thank that's you. the only change that you'll see in here other than that. It's pretty much as, as it's been. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any questions from the board? Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve resolution number 2831. Does anybody want to second that motion? I'll second that motion. All right. Seconded by Supervisor McDevitt. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. All right. Item D, authorization to advertise RFP for traffic light maintenance and inspection services, I'd like to call on Finance Director David Chris to review this item. Thank you, Supervisor Winder. Uh, as the supervisors are aware, the township is responsible for maintaining traffic signals throughout the township. Uh, we currently contract with Higgins and Sons out of Media PA for the professional services related for the maintenance and repair of uh, those facilities. The current contract that we have with Higgins was issued back uh, in 2015 by the Board of Supervisors. 
It was a three-year contract, and there were options to renew on an annual basis. Uh, Higgins & Sons is a very highly qualified company um, and has provided the township with um, you know, very professional and timely services over the past several years. Uh, but as is our practice and as is appropriate for the township, um, we constantly review our contracts uh, to make sure that we're getting the best price and the best service possible. And so that's why uh, we're requesting uh, proposals for traffic signal maintenance and repair services to make sure that we keep getting those high quality services at competitive prices. So township staff is officially asking the Board of Supervisors uh, to authorize us to issue a request for proposal to interested firms to perform traffic signal maintenance and repair services, including preventative inspection and maintenance of traffic signals, emergency response and repair of traffic signal related issues, scheduled repair and replacement of traffic signals, and other services related to traffic signals. So I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions from the board? Okay, excellent. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the authorization to advertise RFP for traffic light maintenance and inspection services. Do I have a second for that motion? I'll second. Okay, seconded by Supervisor uh, Winder. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item E, item e municipal facilities use policy. Again, I'd like to call on uh, Finance Director, uh, Mr. Chris. Thank you, Supervisor McDevitt. Uh, as you recall, at the last meeting, uh, we discussed that the township is, as, as part of our pandemic projects, uh, we've been reviewing a variety of township policies to bring them up to date. And <clears throat> the township has various use policies in place outlining responsibilities for using the different facilities in the township, uh, facilities such as the pavilion, ball field, bocce courts, et cetera. And while these separate policies aren't necessarily in conflict with each other, they've on occasion called confusion um, in, in terms of how they're supposed to be implemented, how they're supposed to be used, uh, and oftentimes they've created some additional work for us whenever we've had to update those uh, policies and, and in general created some extra administrative work. So we started a project to review our policies. We did the one last month for the digital sign policy. Uh, this month we're presenting to you the new uh, uh, municipal facility use policy. And several goals, one is to streamline policies, uh, if we streamline the policy, we can also streamline the administra administrative uh, side of things, which can result in savings to the township. And then also we're trying to simplify the process so that residents who want to use our facilities can figure out how to do it quickly and easily and find forms on our website. So what you have before you is the updated East Norton Township Municipal Facility Use Policy, which also includes our consolidated liability waiver and release forms and our facility use fee waiver application forms because we do get some nonprofits and township organizations who uh, use our facilities and sometimes request for a, a waiver of fee. So we've standardized what that process is. So once again, it's designed to standardize and organize all of this activities into this one document. Uh, and then future updates we can uh, 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 apply to that single document instead of having to do it to, uh, to multiples. Uh, and we've also taken this form and we'll be loading it onto our website so that again, anybody who wants to use the Phil Silly will be able to find it, fill it out online and uh, email it off to us. Okay. So I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions from the board? Pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the municipal facility use policy. Do I have a second for that motion? Okay, seconded by Supervisor Winder. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item F, affirmation of exoneration of tax claim costs. And we've been picking on Finance Director Mr. Chris, and we'll do it one more time to explain that. Thank you, Supervisor Gavanis. Earlier this year, we became aware of a situation where a taxpayer in 2020 paid their, their township and county 2020 real estate taxes. Uh, they forwarded the payment to our previous tax collector's uh, Dropbox mailbox. Um, we never received that payment. 
So at the end of the year, the taxpayer's uh, property was turned over to a county for lien processing. Um, we found out, as I mentioned uh, earlier this year, that they did indeed make that payment. They provided proof of, of um, making the payment and proof of uh, the P.O. Box company receiving the payment in a timely fashion. And so what we're asking is for the board's affirmation of exonerating the delinquent processing fees that the county applied to that taxpayer and forced them to pay uh, because we turned them over for lien processing. Um, we're asking the boards for approval. The county has informed us that only the township has the authorization to exonerate those fees and that we need to inform the county of that. And so it's up to the board to make that determination uh, that it's okay to exonerate those fees. I'd be glad to answer any other questions you any might questions have. Questions from the board? No. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the affirmation of the exoneration of tax claim costs. Um, for the amount of 96.23, is that correct, Mr. Chris? I'm sorry? For the amount of 96.23? That's correct. Yeah. Um, do I have a second for that motion? I'll second that motion. Okay, seconded by Supervisor McDevitt. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, one more time. Uh, monthly expenditures. Um, Mr. Chris, can you explain this item, please? Thank you, Chair DeBiro. As you know, starting in 2021, we've taken the extra step to to ensure as much transparency as, as we can to our residents in our for our operations. And we've begun listing the monthly expenditures for the township. Uh, for the, and, and to be clear, when we talk about monthly expenditures, we're doing it from meeting date to meeting date. So these are actually from the last meeting date until the current meeting date. And our accounts payable expenditures for that time period were $317,990.08. And that includes all of our monthly utility bills, all of our um, uh, fees for professional services, any lease agreements we have, et cetera. Our payroll for that time period was $409,277.71. So the grand total of expenditures was $727,267.79. I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Any questions from the board? Okay. Uh, none being, I would like to approve the monthly expenditures. Do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Vice Chair Gavanis. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Other business? Any other business? I'm sorry, I have one more thing. Sure. It's not really other business. I, I think I'm just kind of in awe to be like here. <laughs> I really, really. Uh, and I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm, I'm going through the motions of the meeting and I'm listening um, and I'm looking around the room and I think that it's the people on, on, on this side of the room deserve kudos for how things have gone in the time that we've been on lockdown and in a pandemic. I mean, if you start at the top of the, the table, we have a deputy chief and we have Officer Peaches. That happened while we weren't here. And um, Jim Sullivan, um, you have new hips, and that's amazing. And it's it's just, and, and I and I say all that because if you when when the people of the township get to come to our campus and come into this building during this time, the building was overhauled, and it's it's more beautiful than it than it's been in my time. It's it's just remarkable. So I think that the the board and the township owe you all a debt of gratitude. Yes, you get paid for your jobs, but every day I feel that you go above and beyond. So that's my other business. Very well said, thank you. I think we all can agree to that. Absolutely, thank you. Manager's update, you're up Mr. Hart. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Supervisor DeSanto made me promise to keep this under 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I will do my best. Um, obviously, just kidding, but I do want to thank you for that uh, recognition and we all feel your appreciation all through the year. And, and this was an extremely difficult year, as, as we all know. Um, we are all blessed with a fantastic staff here, um, from everybody at this, at this table and all their um, support staff to our public works, um, which is just fantastic and doing fantastic things down at the uh, playground now. Um, many other townships have to go out and pay top dollar to private contractors to do the work that we do in-house every day. Um, it's an extreme benefit to the township and to the residents, and it saves taxpayer dollars every day of the week. So 
um, we do appreciate your, your appreciation and, and um, I appreciate the outstanding work they do every day as well. Uh, just a, a few things we have, uh, many of us, uh, for anyone on Zoom or anyone um, uh, here, we have the all-inclusive park that's close to completion um, on Stanford Street. Um, on uh, June 5th at 10 a.m., there'll be a ribbon cutting down here at our new uh, facility. And then at 12 noon, there'll be a uh, ribbon cutting at the Mac Watson Park, uh, which has been renovated um, recently as well. And they're, they're both fantastic. The upgrades are just uh, really, really tremendous. And the, the residents in uh, Mac Watson Park, that, area, that park um, has been completed sooner. So the residents are just over the top with it. They really are. And they have, uh, they've shared their appreciation with us um, and appreciation to the board for putting, making that commitment and making those changes down there. So um, thank you on behalf of uh, the residents there. They have made it clear that they appreciate everything that's done. Um, we're close to camp opening up. Um, after 15 months of lockdown and, and everything under the sun, um, like Supervisor Gavada said, it looks like we're coming out of this. We're still taking it seriously and putting all precautions in place that we, we think are prudent. Um, but at the same time, we're moving forward in a positive way and hope to have a fantastic camp, a uh, fantastic summer, um, community day. We're working hard for September um, to make, make it a real uh, blast of a day for every resident of this township. Um, June 12th, we have the Soul Cruisers, that, uh, the Sensational Soul Cruisers, which will be down there. And, you know, everyone, everyone is out there dancing, enjoying them. Um, June, uh, July 9th, we have, so July 9th, we have our second concert of park. We, um, we polled the township staff on what we're doing, what uh, bands to have. We had AM radio was unanimous. Other than Jim Sullivan, he wanted Lawrence Welk. <laughs> uh, Mr. Welk was unavailable. Um, so we went with AM radio. Um, so if you're a fan of AM radio, you know anything about it, they really bring a crowd and it's really gonna be a, uh, a really fantastic uh, night on January 9th. Um, July 9th, thank you, thank you. That's my other half in the back there, <laughs> Thomas. Um, Thomas. I know, I, oh, sorry. I see our uh, chair of our planning commission, uh, Mr. Kolb here. He'll be happy to know he's also a hiker who uses our parks. Um, Ballard Wolf Park, I, ha I go there tomorrow. There's been a ton of work done in the past several days and they were out there finishing up with certain things today. So we're gonna go out there, reevaluate and look for phase two. So stay tuned for that. Um, <clears throat> let me see, what else do I have for you? Um, other than I do, um, I, I know we have Mr. Cole here, but we also have one other um, individual here, the former, the founding chairman of our Human Relations Commission, Mr. Ben is here, and uh, he, it's good to see him in, in the audience, and I thought, um, I know he's got a lot going on in his life that I won't discuss here right now, but I just wanted to publicly ask him to hang around because if I can talk him in to joining the Human Relations Commission again, um, <laughs> I'd like that opportunity before we all adjourn for the night. So, Mr. Ben, you know. Nothing like being put on the yeah. spot. That's right. We'll talk. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's all I have for you tonight, but I do appreciate uh, being here and, and seeing all of you. And, um, it would, you were all truly missed, and, and I know we're all in here just thinking, God, there's hope again. So, mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you. All right, citizens to be heard. Any takers? Anything on Zoom? Okay. Uh, before we adjourn, I just want to send my, uh, or just congratulate one of our supervisors on her recent getting married. Thank so congratulations. You. Um, it's been two years in the in the making, yeah. so the pandemic yeah. pushed it back. Uh, third time's a charm. So hey. I appreciate you all being there, and it was nice to celebrate with friends and family. So that was great. and if you notice my tan, I went to Key West on my hunt. Oh, I noticed. <laughs> no jealous. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you. So uh, we'll adjourn. Um, oh wait, I have to put that in motion, right? I'll, I'll make that in the motion. Thank you. Okay. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Great. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. All those opposed? Motion carries. Thanks.